Hi folks, I'm Tom Roberts. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer for Tradecentric. We're at the top of the hour, but I'm gonna give it about 30 seconds to let a few more folks join. And while we do that, my DJ will provide some music. So don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. Okay, so folks, thanks so much for joining our LinkedIn Live session, our next installment. So as I said earlier, my name is Tom Roberts. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer for Tradecentric. Uh, this is the next installment in our series of LinkedIn Lives. And what I'm going to highlight for you today quickly is some new research that we're going to be publishing in the next several weeks um, that is underwritten by both Tradecentric and as well as DC360 or Digital Commerce 360 on really the state of supplier-led B2B e-commerce, and then also where different suppliers are on their overall maturity curve. And I'm going to highlight four different key findings from a very big study that we'll be publishing. So before I get to that, however, just some housekeeping in terms of how you ask questions. There are two ways to ask questions here. You can connect with me on LinkedIn and then use LinkedIn's messaging service or platform to ask your question directly to me. Or you can also email info at tradecentric.com. Again, it's info at tradecentric.com, and we will do our best to get back in touch with you with an answer to your question. So let's kick it off with the next slide. Um, so as I said, this research was underwritten by both Tradecentric as well as Digital Commerce 360. Um, and it was really focused on North American suppliers, really U.S. and Canada, across a range of different revenue sizes and industries, small, medium, and large, and a whole variety of different industries. And more than 120 organizations responded to our survey, so a pretty good sample size. The objective really was twofold. Uh, first, to understand sort of the state of B2B e-commerce and how people are feeling about their growth rates and spending priorities, but then also where we are and where suppliers are when we call the B2B commerce maturity curve. And I'll talk more about that in a few minutes. So our first finding is really about the healthiness and the growth of e-commerce overall over the last 12 months. This is a simple question of the past 12 months. How much has your B2B e-commerce revenue grown? And the good news is here that 90% of all the respondents are up and to the right. So that's positive. And 61% grew 11% or more, and almost 20%, almost one-fifth grew 25% or more. A small number were flat, and a smaller number, small number were down as well. So, but it's very much in the minority of folks who are not experiencing pretty healthy overall digital commerce B2B growth through their different channels and through their e-commerce channel. Our next finding is really about the maturity of different suppliers. Now, this is after literally decades of investment in B2B commerce for various different organizations, various sizes and industries. So we split this up into basically several different categories, and we call it e-com sort of maturity 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, 4.0, and then connected commerce. And I'll explain those quickly. Uh, but if you look at the right side on the graph, for those of you who took and can remember your high school or college statistics, it basically looks like a normal distribution or a bell curve on its side, roughly. So e-commerce 1.0. Hey, I've invested in my e-commerce platform and I'm trying to migrate customers from manual ordering, the basics. 20% of the population responded that that is where they are. 17% of respondents said, hey, I fully adopted e-commerce, but I don't lack, I'd lack the ability to customize the experience for some of my largest customers. For instance, um, negotiated prices, inventory levels, um, delivery timeframes, and those types of things. It's one size fits all for Ecom 2.0. 17% of respondents. The majority, 28%, said they were at Ecom 3.0, which basically they have built and established their e-commerce um, solution as the primary ordering channel. However, one of the key takeaways for this, for me personally, is how many other channels are also prevalent, including EDI, and to some extent, still manual ordering through various different channels. But that's where people put themselves in Ecom 3.0. 4.0 and connected commerce really starts moving toward understanding how buyer behavior is changing, and many buyers or customers are implementing e-procurement platforms. So 
folks in the 4.0 and connected commerce categories, 18% and 17% to varying different degrees have been investing in e-procurement integrations for their more sophisticated um, customers and a growing bevy of customers. And overall, that's about 35%. Connected commerce is really the full-blown focus, lots of integrations, and punch out PO and invoice automation as a full gamut of connected commerce solutions. So again, about 35% of the population sort of moving into, have moved into that e-procurement uh, channel. The next key finding also is pretty, um, pretty much an important takeaway. So we asked the question, how many of your customers are specifically asking for e-procurement integrations? This is a very interesting takeaway. So 61% of supplier respondents said that 21% of their customers or more are actively requesting e-procurement integrations. Let me repeat that. 61% of respondents said that 21%, almost a quarter of their customers or more are actively asking for them to integrate with e-procurement platforms like a Coupa, like an SAP Ariba, like a Jagger, like an iValua, uh, like a Bird Street. So you juxtapose that, a vast majority of, of our respondents and suppliers saying customers are requesting that. The prior slide said only about 35% of respondents have moved into this uh, channel. And there's sort of a disconnect in terms of competitiveness and really responding to how buyer behavior is changing as e-procurement really gets more and more prevalently adopted from large enterprise and now mid-sized enterprises as well, and some smaller enterprises. So that is a, a distinct sort of mis mis mismatch in how suppliers are responding and then their buyer demand and requirements. The last takeaway that I'll highlight, we asked the question, hey, if you are and have implemented e-procurement integrations, what do you wanna see in terms of data and analytics and visibility into transaction data and other things that are important to you for that growing and increasingly important channel. So 63% said real-time visibility into transaction and spend data. Um, and also, to be honest, when things go wrong, if something breaks, they want to know about it immediately. 61% uh, said reports for purchasing habits and trends. So watching how different purchasing organizations are shopping, if you will, and placing orders and any trends that we can see. Insights into the purchasing process overall. And then finally, for that channel in particular, cart abandonment is a little trickier than a standard e-commerce login, fill up my cart, but then don't check out. Because here with e-procurement, you're basically allowing somebody to not check out, but pull the cart contents back into their e-procurement system and then route that for approval. Two things can happen in terms of an abandonment, if you will. One, an order can get placed through a PO, but not for the entire con cart contents that were transferred back to e-procurement. Something happened there. Something didn't get approved or they found another place to buy something at a cheaper price or better delivery, et cetera. Or no order gets placed for a cart that is pulled back into procurement. And again, that should be something that should be a flag. So these are the four top things that people requested and are interested in seeing if you are implementing e-procurement integrations. So in summary, I wanna go through the three key takeaways here. And I wanna say that there's a lot more in this report and I'll highlight that in a second. Um, but for this presentation, one, B2B e-commerce growth is rapidly increasing from the vast majority of suppliers that responded to our survey. And honestly, from what we see from our customers, and engaging with prospects so far halfway through the year, we, should, we see no signs of that slowing, despite all the economic uncertainty that we see around the globe. Uh, secondly, um, despite years and decades of investment, you know, in terms of maturity, suppliers are really, it's almost a peanut butter spread of where they are on the maturity curve. Some are advancing really rapidly, about 35%, but some still have some stages to get through to really advance the maturity of their overall solution and the buying experience. And then finally, buying behavior of customers in a B2B channel is changing as they implement more and more e-procurement solutions. And as CFOs and chief procurement officers look for more transparency and visibility into how their purchasers are really transacting, 
and suppliers that are not responding to that. Remember, 61% of our respondents said almost a quarter or more of their customers are requesting this. Only 35% of respondents said they're actively investing in this channel. That means there's a competitive disconnect. Those that are investing and responding do better than those who are not, especially over time. So as I said, we'll have the full report coming out sometime in the next several weeks. There is a lot more information in this. I could only really present four things here. There are key takeaways, but there's a lot packed into this report. Um, if you want access to that, it's going to be free, uh, no charge to you. And for early access, you can get uh, a notification about that in two ways. One, go to our website and sign up for our newsletter. There will be a link in the chat to go directly to the page on our website where you can sign up for the newsletter. It's also in our resources section. And then secondly, the other way you can do it is just follow us on LinkedIn. Uh, we, we are very active on LinkedIn and other social networks, but LinkedIn in particular. And we will definitely be advertising and publicizing when the full report is available. So with that, I just want to repeat how you want to ask. If you want to ask questions, there are two ways to do that. One, you can connect with me on LinkedIn. And once you've connected with me, just ask a question using LinkedIn. Or alternatively, you can send email to info at tradecentric.com, and we'll get back to you with an answer to your question. Thank you very much for your time, and enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.